What is the best starter Pokemon for a playthrough in its own region? Well, the fifth most dominant starter Pokemon in the series is Blastoise of Generation 1. And you're probably wondering, what do I exactly mean when I say it? dominant. Well, we're not basing things necessarily off of overall stats or abilities, it's just this. Of all the significant fights you face in a generation, right? Gym leaders, elite four members, maybe a noteworthy rival or gang member. Of all those Pokemon, how many can your starter take down? How useful is your starter for clearing a game? With Blastoise, it's very obvious that this thing is the alpha starter of Kanto. Now, most people, when asked this question, will say that Bulbasaur is the best starter because it's great great for the first four gyms of the game. But the thing with Venusaur is it is not consistent throughout the entire game. It struggles against Sabrina's Psychics, Blaine's Fires, Lorelei's Ice Types, Agatha's Poisons, and your rival's Champion Fight. It's actually just bad against your rival in general. Now on paper, Venusaur and Blastoise are about equal in Pokemon they can beat throughout the game. Blastoise goes neutral to 22 Pokemon and only loses to 16, whereas Bulbasaur goes neutral to 14 and loses to 23. But once you get into the thick of this game, it's actually much more obvious. And that's because Blastoise has an insane moveset in Gen 1. It gets the move Dig, which in Gen 1 is 100 base power and body slam before the third gym. You also get Ice Beam before the fourth gym and Surf before the fifth. For most games, those are elite four level moves that you are rocking through basically the entire game. You wreck Brock, resist Misty, Dig Surge, Ice Beam Erica, Dig Koga, body slam Sabrina, Surf Blaine and Giovanni in every instance. You resist Lorelei's Ice Team, punish Bruno's fighters, Earthquake Agatha and her stupid non-levitating having ass ghost type poisons, and Ice Beam Lance's dragons. It also has the best performance in the champion fight by a long shot. As for Charizard, well, type matchups matter much less than you might think in this game, so Charizard actually performs pretty well, but nothing tops the Giga Chad's toys. It's a Pokemon that has use on every single major fight in the game. Even the two fights against Surge and Erica that it does bad, it has an answer to take out at least one Pokemon. This is the reason Blastoise is one of the two Pokemon that speedrunners use to beat this game. It's because it's consistent. And while its stats hold it back from being in our top spot, it earns a very nice cushy place at number 5. The fourth most dominant starter goes to Cinderace. And this is for a very different reason than why Blastoise made the list. Now see, Cinderace doesn't have the advantage of amazing matchups through of the game. In this case, it relies purely off of stats and moveset. With 119 speed and 116 attack, this gives it some of the best stats in the game. Plus, you have the move Pyro Ball, which is a 120 base power move with 90% accuracy. The thing with Cinderace is it actually has pretty bad matchups throughout the game. And in fact, all three starters do. This was probably meant to be on purpose due to how overpowered the leveling is in Gen 8, but still, it's insane. Its stats make it so unbelievably powerful that it decimates the region and the other two starters are nowhere close to this. Rillaboom is stuck with Razor Leaf for stab until it evolves and then Wood Hammer, which does recoil damage, whereas Power Ball just doesn't. And Talion at least gets Water Pulse early on, but its signature move Snipe Shot only does 80 damage. Like, bro, come on, just use Surf. And while I do think that these other two starters are very good, they don't perform well enough that I think they really deserve the title of being dominant in the region. But even in the fights that it's only okay, it does pretty well. Like, Score Buddy gets double kick pretty early, which makes it fair okay against Nessa's water types with her G-Max Dreadnought. Now, at number three, we have the Pokemon everyone thinks of when you say firefighting, and that's Infernape. If you've played Diamond or Pearl or the remakes or anything, and you've used Infernape, you'll know how broken this Pokemon feels. So to start, firefighting is obviously insane. It's a typing that just gives you amazing coverage throughout the entire game. But that alone is not it, because Blaziken and Embor are not on our list. First of all, this thing gets close combat at level 41, which is insane. Like Cinderace's Pyro Ball, this move has 120 base power, but in this case it's got 100% accuracy. The downside of this move is that it lowers your defenses when you use it, but because you just wreck everything with it, you never 
actually get hit. And this is a prime example of Infernape where a strong offense ends up being the best defense. It doesn't matter if your defenses are lowered from already being pretty low because you just wreck everything before it can even hit you. You also get access to Flamethrower fairly early. And if you're really looking for even more beef, you get Flare Blitz, which also does 120 damage at 57. So you've got a super frail, but insanely strong special and physical attacking Pokemon with Stab Fire and Fighting Moves. What more do you want? To be fair here, all three starters in Gen 4 are amazing and they all get decent type matchups, making them all worthy candidates of being dominant starters. And Polion's best moves are probably Surf and the Flash Cannon TM you get from Byron. Torterra does get early stab Earthquake, but doesn't really get a strong grass move until late game. But with 108 base speed plus 104 attack and special attack, Infernape hits hard and Oat speeds almost everything. Compare this to Torterra and Empoleon, who also may take things out in one hit, but are constantly getting hit themselves, they just don't quite exude the same dominant energy. Infernape is a sweeping machine that doesn't even need insane matchups to dominate its region. Now at number two, we have Primarina. I initially thought Infernape was going to take this spot, but on closer look, Primarina is insane. Going through every major Pokemon you have to face throughout the Islands Trials and Elite Four, Primarina loses to three of them. You have to be wary of Lorantis, Vikavolt, and Kahili's Crobat, and that is it. It's not very often you see a Pokemon that's effective against over 50% of the Pokemon you face while being beat by less than 10. Primarina also has an insane moveset with Moonblast, Sparkling Aura, Surf, Stab Aqua Jet, and Ice Beam. Now sure, Primarina is fairly slow, so you are taking hits on the regular. But to be fair, all of the Alola starters are slow, so it doesn't really matter. Like whatever you take, you're getting something slow, but Primarina devastates this game. Now before we get to the most dominant starter Pokemon of all time, I got a few honorable mentions. Torterra is worth a shout. My man gets amazing tight matchups in Gen 4, plus early stab, Earthquake. Unfortunately, it's just really slow, and Ice is something you seriously have to watch out for. Decidueye is also worth a mention. Definitely shouldn't be understated just how good Stab Spirit Shackle is. Also, having a starter with immunity to normal types is really useful. And I think we should also mention Blaziken. In competitive, it's one of the strongest Pokemon in history, and that's because of its crazy 120 attack plus its hidden ability speed boost. So if you were able to include hidden abilities for Gen 3, I think Blaziken would be much better. But with its only decent type matchups and underwhelming moveset in Gen 3, Blaziken sadly gets overshadowed completely by our number one spot. And ladies and gentlemen, that is Swampert. Could it be anything else? The water ground type. I mean, I think that says it all right there. Water Ground is a notably amazing typing because it only has one weakness to grass. And I know what you're thinking. Well, that's a 4X. That's a pretty big deal. Swampert's going to get wrecked if he ever encounters a grass Pokemon. But that plays perfectly into Swampert's hands. So of Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald, there are two Pokemon throughout the entire Gym League that have grass moves. You got Tropius on Winona's team and Titan Liza's Soul Rock with Solar Beam. Other than that, in the Elite Four, you gotta watch out for Sydney Shiftry and Cacturn and Steven's Cradilly. That's it. Those are the only Pokemon that can kill Swampert. But most notably, it's amazing for taking out Drake with ice moves and obviously taking down Steven in the final champion fight. And so really, when you think about a Pokemon that dominates a game, there's nothing quite like Swampert. 